In multivariable calculus, we have many notions of a derivative, but they all start off with the notion of the partial derivatives. So recall in univariate calculus, we have the definition of a derivative is, well, d f over dx at x naught is equal to this limit as h approaches 0 of f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught all over h and we want we want to generalize this idea to multiple dimensions so the first thing we're going to consider is actually what happens when we fix slices of a multiple multivariate function So for example, let's consider the, the function f of x, y is equal to 1 minus x squared minus y squared. So it's a simple function. It looks like a parabolic hill. That's it. So in the x direction, it looks like a parabola. I'm just drawing this on the, the positive part. And the level sets look like circles. So we roughly have that picture. What happens when we fix y not? Then we have a function f of x comma y not is equal to 1 minus y naught squared. So now this is a constant term, minus x squared. And when we fix y naught, at some point, we'll say this is y naught, then that corresponds to looking at just a slice of this function. And the slice just hits exactly where everything is equal to y naught. And so the curve on this slice looks like this. That's what our curve looks like. But now, this is just a function of x, x. And we know how to take a derivative of just a function of x. And we're going to say that df dx of x y naught is going to be equal to d dx of this function, 1 minus y naught squared minus x squared. But since 1 minus y naught squared is constant, the derivative of anything that's constant is 0. So this is d dx of 1 minus y naught squared minus d dx. So I'm using linearity of the derivative. So this part is 0. And then I have minus, this gives me 2x. You remember how to differentiate polynomials. And ultimately, this is just negative 2x. So this tells me, as I move x, as I change my x value here, so x is here, y is here, this is f of x, y. This tells me, as I change x, I'm going to get exactly this change in the slope. Or that'll tell me the steepness of the hill as I try to move at x. So if I start here at x naught, so I'm at the point x naught y naught, then I'll have derivative in the x direction uh, to be negative 2 x naught. And this is how we define the partial derivative. This is actually the partial derivative, and it's actually a full function of y. If you notice, I could have set y to be anything, even, even uh, just y itself without the naught, as long as I assumed that it was constant. So the partial derivative... assumes all other variables are constant. And that means that we can actually compute all the partial derivatives really simply.
So for our example here, we've got df dx, and we write a curly d, xy is equal to d dx of 1 minus y squared minus x squared. Well, since 1 is constant with respect to this differentiation, and y squared is constant with respect to this differentiation, I'm going to get 0 there, and then I just have the normal derivative of the x term. So this gives me negative 2x. Well, let's look at df dy of x, y. Well, that's equal to d dy of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. These first two things are assumed to be constant with respect to this guy. And then I just differentiate the y term, and I get negative 2y. So now that we've seen this in action, we can actually write down a definition. If we have f from r in into r, the partial derivative with respect to the variable xi at a point x naught is equal to x1 naught, x2 naught, up to x n naught is df dxi of x naught. Well, again, we define it in terms of a limit. And it's still h is going to 0. But now the only thing that I'm going to change is the ith entry. So I just changed the ith entry by h. I subtract off f x1 naught, x2 naught, up to xn naught. And I, div I divide by h. And that's it. So let's do one more example to kind of cap this off to show you exactly how this is going to behave. And it's a really, it's a really simple idea. Once you say that, oh, I'm just setting all the other variables to be constant as I take the differentiation. It's really easy to compute all this, as long as you make sure you remember to keep everything constant. So let's suppose we have x of y, x, y, and z. And we set that equal to x, y, z squared. Then we have three different partial derivatives that we can take. The first one is df dx. So we have df dx x, y, z. Well, if we take the derivative with respect to x, then y and z, z squared, that's just constant. And so I just take the derivative of x, and that will give me 1, and I'll have y times what was a constant term. So this ends up being y, z squared. Similarly, df dy of x, y, z. Well, again, I've got x and z squared is some constant that I draw out. y, once I differentiate with respect to y, it gives me 1. So I end up with just x, z squared. And now I finally have df dz of x, y, z. And here, x and y are constant. That product is constant. And then I have to differentiate z squared with respect to z. And that gives me 2z, so I end up with 2xyz.